Well, my name is Janice Morgan. Um, we can't, my husband and I, whose name was Ron, came here in 1982. We both um, went forward and we gave our hearts to the Lord in about 1985 and became very um, involved with the church right from the word go, I guess. And then in 1996, in the early 90s, sorry, we met up with Neville and Betty Moore and they introduced us to the fact that Thailand was an amazing place. It was just a, a, a fledgling little place that we could go and we could visit and that's exactly what we did. And from then on, Pastor David Storer was the church leader here and he somehow was involved with that beginning and encouraged us to go. And this church raised a lot of money to build a house over there. And so when Betty and I went there, we made curtains for the rooms and, and did all sorts of things to make it nice. And our men, amazingly, they had underground water, but they had no water in the little homes that they had there. So our men, plus Graham Amory, who used to come here, they managed to fit the places up with, because they were farmers, they knew and they understood, and we bought tanks and stands, and it was an amazing time, and we were able to put water all through the three homes that were there, and they were so appreciative of that. So I went there probably for another four years with Betty and Neville, um, and then both Betty and Neville passed away, and Betty had left quite an inheritance of money for them to build another home, and they built a beautiful home. And it is an incredible story. It's called Mercy International and it's called also the Home of Mercy for Children. So that was um, one of the great things that I believe this church did. They financed for one of the homes and they continue, I think even to this day, to send some form of finances over there on a yearly basis. We started, or at least the group of us started, a prayer for Israel. Trevor kindly let us do that. And it was started first of all in my home because that's how I ran one in Queensland. But then we realised that the greater blessing would be shared if it was in a church. And you see, God blesses those who bless Israel. And that blessing, I believe, has flowed for 20 years in this place through faithful people who come. They've been faithful to the letter and I take my hat off to them. Some of them have had, had illnesses and still do and they still come and it's wonderful to see. Yeah, just a bit weepy over that. <laughs> but um, one of the highlights of um, the prayer for Israel was the time Jan heard from God to send 500 blankets to the IDF. Now one lady and 500 blankets, it just in, in your face looks impossible, but with God all things are possible. Um, she put out a, a, a GoFundMe uh, online and before you knew it, we had money rolling in, but we had most, most of all, we had volunteers from other churches in the town and friends and I think overall we had about 20 people involved and it was months and we did it in two stages 250 at a time and Jan liaised with uh, an official in the IDF in Israel and it took a lot of tenacity on her part to see this thing through but she had the quiet faith to stand still and see the glory of God. And we made our target. Now they specified that they were to be a certain color, a certain size, and we sewed scriptures inside them. We loaded the blankets with scriptures. And on the outside, we put in Hebrew, he that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps in Hebrew. And it was an amazing feat. But what was so special about it too was the, the bonding, the inter-church um, response for the people in the other churches. And um, to see something come from nothing to something great. The other thing I felt about um, 
the prayer for Israel, we had Pastor Patrick Russell, who heads up Christian Friends of Israel, come and visit at one time and he taught on how God regards Israel through the Bible. And he still heads that up and we still fund it. And in Israel, they have about nine different arms of Christian witness to the Jewish people and to the Muslims over there, uh, which is amazing. In uh, 1987, I think it is, Teen Challenge started up. We got involved with that. Oh, it was a cool classic. Counselor. Because they had girls here as well in some some of those years there was. Uh, we, then we had uh, men, uh, men that were in the, the families, they would have their wives come to visit them for the weekend because there was no money so we used to bring them, we used to take them out to the farm and yeah, have them for the weekend. Uh, be a wife and a couple of kids and three or four kids sometimes. Yeah. That was what it was in those days that they needed looking after. And they were appreciative of them. Some of the, even some of the guys we still keep in church, intact with the Teen Challenge boys. They used to come, old oh, Gordon Broussard, when he first introduced them, they used to sit over, just over there, right in the, always in the one place. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, they, uh, yeah, time went on from there and I worked at Teen Challenge, but on and off, or not on, on, on and off, on a voluntary basis, well, for 10 years, yeah.